Your Royal Highness, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahima Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King of Bahrain and President of the Supreme Council for Women of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Excellency Minister Hala Al Ansari, Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women. Excellency Mr. Emmanuel Mayer, Chargé d'Affaires of the Embassy of France to the Kingdom of Bahrain, members of the award jury, winners of the 2019 inaugural Global Award, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today from around the world to mark the launch of the second round of the Princess Sabika bint Ibrahima Khalifa Global Award for Women's Empowerment. My name is Josephine Moss. I work in the UN Women Regional Office for the Arab States, and I will be the moderator for today's auspicious occasion. Interpretation is provided in Arabic, French, Spanish, and English. It's now my pleasure to introduce the recorded remarks of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahima Khalifa, First Lady of the Kingdom of Bahrain and President of the Supreme Council of Women, to officially launch the 2022 Bahrain Global Award for Women's Empowerment. Al-Hazur al-Kareem, ajid fi ijtima'akum hadha khayru fursa li ilqa al-dhaw marratan ukhra ala risalat wa ahdaf al-jaiza allati najid fiha khulasatan fikriya wa ma'rifiya li khibratan al-wataniya fi majal tamkin al-mar'a ومتابعة تقدمها في مملكة البحرين الأمر الذي أسهم في وضع هذه المبادرة تحت تصرف المجتمع الدولي من خلال هيئة الأمم المتحدة للمرأة التي تحرص بدورها على إتاحة الفرصة لتبادل الخبرات ونقل المعارف وتوجيه الموارد لدعم الجهود والمساهمات الوطنية التي ترتقي بحياة المرأة وتمكنها من الإسهام بشكل مؤثر في تنمية ونهضة مجتمعها. We will now listen to the opening remarks of Her Excellency Ms. Anita Bhatia, United Nations Assistant Secretary General and Deputy Executive Director of UN Women. Your Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, Chair of the Supreme Council for Women of the Kingdom of Bahrain, Excellency Hala Al Ansari, Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends. I am very pleased to have this opportunity to speak to you on the occasion of the launch of applications for the 2022. Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women's Empowerment on behalf of our Executive Director, who is an ex officio member of the jury and sends her sincere regrets for not being able to be here in person today and to be able to address this distinguished audience herself. The Supreme Council for Women under the leadership of Her Royal Highness, Princess Sabika, has taken a number of important steps towards gender equality and women's empowerment in Bahrain. Under the National Plan for the Advancement of Women, coordinated by the Supreme Council, the Kingdom of Bahrain has advanced protections around women's empowerment in line with the country's international human rights commitments and its constitutional guarantee of equality between women and men in political, social, cultural, and economic life. Bahrain is the first country in the Arab states region to have elected a woman as speaker of the national parliament. Bahrain is also a stalwart participant in the annual 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking to you today in the middle of the Generation Equality Forum. This is a landmark event to catalyze rapid advancement on gender equality, and the forum is taking place at a very critical moment. We know that COVID-19 is threatening to roll back existing gains for women's rights, and the discussions and the debates of the three days of the forum will put gender equality at the heart of the Building Back Better agenda. The forum 
will drive a rapid acceleration in gender equality, in leadership and opportunity for women and girls worldwide. It will also fuel a significant and lasting multi-stakeholder coalition for gender equality. The Bahrain Global Award is aligned with these objectives, not only in its goal of encouraging advancement in women's empowerment around the world, but also in its celebrations of the contributions of diverse stakeholders, public sector, private sector, civil society organizations, and individual champions. This award shines a spotlight on the need for all segments of society to collaborate on the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals and on Sustainable Development Goal number five, in particular, to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. 26 years after the landmark Fourth World Conference on Women in Beijing, the OECD reports that investments in gender equality are vastly insufficient to achieve gender equality. Even pre-COVID, 20% of women and girls annually reported experiencing some form of violence. The World Economic Forum has estimated that based on current progress, women will not achieve pay or leadership equity with men for at least another 136 years, an increase of a generation since its last published report. This means, ladies and gentlemen, that things are getting worse, not better. This gender equality crisis has been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic through its disproportionately negative impact on the income, health, and safety of women and girls around the world. This award offers a critical opportunity to shine a light on those things that work to advance gender equality. Ladies and gentlemen, together with you, I hope that we can encourage many organizations and individuals to apply for the Bahrain Global Award and in so doing to share their success stories for women's empowerment in the world so as to inspire everyone. Thank you very much. It is now my honor to invite Her Excellency Minister Hala Al Ansari, Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women of the Kingdom of Bahrain to make welcoming remarks. Excellency, the floor is yours. Your Excellency, Dr. Anita Bhatia, United Nations Assistant Secretary General, Deputy Director of UN Women, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Kingdom of Bahrain, it is a pleasure to welcome you all to the launch of the second round of Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa's Global Award for Women Empowerment, which coincides with UN Women's important conference discussing the way forward to bridge generation gaps during these difficult times. I'm also pleased to extend our thanks and gratitude to you and women for affiliating with the Supreme Council for Women on all fronts of shared interest and for their adoption renewal of this initiative for the second round. Such a commitment to the award not only confirms the support to global efforts towards enhancing the status of women, but also contributes directly to achieving the sustainable development goals, specifically gender balance and equal opportunities. 14 years ago, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, President of the Supreme Council for Women, established a national award in the Kingdom of Bahrain, which has over the years contributed to the tangible and positive impact of national efforts that is showcased mainly in an increase in the percentage of the participation of Bahraini women working in the public and private sector, and particularly in middle management positions, the adoption of equal opportunity principles and practices by national policies, legislations, strategies, plans, and programs, 
and develop and implement programs that enhance work-life balance by targeting the needs of working women and ensuring their sustainable advancement in the workforce. Building on such an impact, the Global Award was further developed in line with international standards and practices with the overall aim to highlight the important role of public-private partnership to adopt and instill non-biased policies against women, advocate for justice and equal participation between women and men in all fields of public life, promote and recognize institutional and individual efforts, initiatives, and projects that target mainstreaming women's needs in development, highlight community endeavors, drawing on experiences, talent, and creativity to reinforce the stability and security of women and their families, and to reaffirm the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitments towards women advancement as a main driver of sustainable development at a global level. And before I refer to you and women's team to elaborate on the details of the Global Award, I kindly invite institutions and individuals worldwide to share their success stories on such a platform that welcomes and applauds innovation that brings in new approaches to bridge gaps in favor of women of all ages and in various fields, while ensuring the sustainability of these initiatives during times of peace, stability, conflicts, disasters, or pandemics. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, together we hope to continue supporting and uploading genuine impact in the field of women empowerment and equal opportunities as key determinants to collective progress. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, the Bahrain Global Award for Women's Empowerment emphasizes the importance of engaging stakeholders from diverse sectors to achieve impact for women's empowerment. The award specifically recognizes contributions of four categories, public sector, private sector, civil society organizations, and individual champions. We will now hear from leading representatives of these four sectors in a panel discussion on why women's empowerment is a global imperative to achieve Agenda 2030. To begin our discussion today, I'm very pleased to introduce Ms. Yeni Wahid, Director of the Wahid Foundation. Ms. Yeni Wahid is a former international journalist and member of the Special Staff for Political Communication working in the Office of the President of the Republic of Indonesia. She has extensive experience working closely with grassroots communities and is one of the founders of the Wahid Foundation which aims to achieve social justice of humankind based on Islamic values that uphold pluralism, multiculturalism, democracy, and human rights. Ms. Wahid, we would be very pleased to hear your perspectives on the public sector walking the talk on women's empowerment for national development. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ms. Josephine. Her Royal Highness, Mrs. Sabika Bidi Ibrahim Al Khalifa, Her Excellency, Hala Al Ansari, Excellencies Anita Batia and all the wonderful people of uh, the young woman, um, esteemed speakers, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this uh, wonderful uh, event which celebrates women and tries to empower women uh, in our societies. And I think um, we all know that uh, the current imbalances, gender imbalances, had put uh, big barriers for a uh, majority of women to realize their potentials in helping society to achieve many goals. And therefore, uh, we need to uh, engage women, we need to facilitate women so that they can um, develop their uh, potential more, contribute to society on an um, equal part uh, partnership with men. Um, so I would like to just tell you a little bit of what we uh, we're doing here in Indonesia uh, as an example of how we try to facilitate women more in uh, being a positively contributing members of the society. Through my foundation, the White Foundation, uh, we are engaged with the government to uh, create a national uh, action plan. It's a government program uh, 
that to prevent or to uh, counter uh, violence extremism. One of the critical points of this policy is the importance of uh, women's role in uh, especially shaping the community resilience against the narratives and ideology of extremism. Um, through these interventions, uh, we have developed two uh, kind of uh, uh, programs. Uh, the first one is called a Peace School Initiative that especially addressing the youth, especially the vulnerable ones in navigating pressures in the society that might lead to a sense of despair and grief. From our, uh, from our research at the foundation, we found that a sense of grief and a sense of, uh, of misery is a big factor that lead people to radical acts. So therefore, addressing these issues, helping our youth to be able to navigate the pressure from the society is critical to create a more resilient uh, society. The second uh, program that we have created, and this is together with the UN Women, uh, is we try to build resilience on the community level through a program called Peace Village Initiative. The program tries to promote social cohesion, tries to promote a conflict prevention mechanism in, uh, in communities by using three different pillars. The first one is through economic empowerment efforts. And the second pillar is through training on peace, on peace mechanism, trying to uh, create mechanism of conflict prevention in the communities, uh, creating a uh, mechanism in which people are able to address their griefs, to address their grievances, to address their uh, problems, the issues be before it becomes a uh, issues that might have a much bigger impact or much bigger uh, potential to, uh, to explode. Uh, the third one is women empowerment. So combining these three different uh, approaches, we try to create resilience and using or, uh, or facilitating women as the main drivers in these efforts. What we found is that uh, when we directly try to interfere or directly try to address or focus on women, we found that the impact is much, much bigger than if we had just addressed, for example, uh, as uh, men, for example. Because as we know from many uh, research uh, shows that when you uh, facilitate women or when you try to, uh, when you invest in women, then the effort or the impact will be much more, uh, will, be, could be, uh, will be tenfold because women then reinvest uh, what they have, the resources in the societies and their families and their communities. So we found, for example, uh, you know, cases in which women made the uh, paradigm shift that is quite radical. For example, we've got one uh, beneficiaries in a remote village in uh, East Java. Her name is Ibu uh, Habsa. And she was, uh, you know, the least to say, she was very ignorant of women's rights. In fact, she said to us, when we first approached the, her village, she said in astonishment, I didn't realize that women have rights. That's the, that's the comments that she made. Now, the same woman is mulling over the plan to run as a, a village chief. So you see there's a big, a big uh, leap of paradigm there, uh, paradigm shifting in her confidence in herself, in her, uh, in, uh, in her uh, thinking process and in her, um, in her belief that women have rights and when women are, being, uh, gi are given their rights and they can contribute more to the societies. So this Peace Village program that is supported uh, by the UN Women uh, also um, work with local authorities. We try to uh, facilitate uh, discussions with local authorities, with religious clerics, with public figures, with private entities 
to work together in supporting women's increased participation, especially in local decision-making process. We also try to increase access to economic opportunities. Uh, we try to create uh, interfaith dialogues, uh, creating multi-ethnicity communities to create social cohesion more. Um, and from our experience, especially in these uh, in this uh, pandemic uh, uh, time, we found that women actually, women leadership plays important roles during crisis. In one of our villages, for example, uh, we've got our women helping government in promoting health protocols and also trying to achieve a zero infection rate in their villages. So from these uh, empirical evidences, we can conclude that empowering women brings greater benefit to the societies. And only by empowering women that we can achieve all the goals that we mankind have uh, set out to do. And so I just wanna thank you again uh, for uh, government of Bahrain and also for UN Women to create this uh, important platform so that women's efforts are being recognized and being strengthened. And when women are being strengthened, societies will be strengthened as well. With that, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ms. Wahid, thank you so much for highlighting in particular the, the importance of equal partnerships between men and women to achieve uh, peace and sustainability at the grassroots level as well. Uh, the, the point that you made around the role of women to support communities to um, resist violent extremism and to build resilience is a really important one, uh, particularly relevant in unfortunately many regions of our world. And particularly, thank you for highlighting the sense of self-empowerment that women develop when they are able to participate in programs such as those that you are running with the foundation regarding uh, conflict prevention and, and timely resolution of, um, of grassroots concerns and how this can uh, lead them to aspire to even uh, more participation in the public life of their communities and societies. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you very much, Ms. Josephine. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Abdurrahman Jawahari, President of Gulf Petrochemicals Industries Company. Dr. Abdurrahman has spent almost four decades with Gulf Petrochemicals Industries Company and has led the company as president since 2005. Dr. Abdurrahman is highly active in Bahrain's private sector and philanthropic and policy circles. He's a member of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies and has been formerly a member of numerous entities, including the Council of Commissioners of the Bahrain National Institution for Human Rights. He has been recognized in Bahrain and internationally for his commitment to women's empowerment in the private sector. In this capacity, Dr. Abdurrahman will kindly share his views on why women's empowerment makes good business sense for the private sector. Dr. Abdurrahman, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by saying what a great honor and privilege it is for me to participate here at the launch of the second round of Princess Sibika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa's Global Award for Women's Empowerment. And may I, may I take this opportunity to praise Her Highness's endeavors, humanitarian role, and keenness in assessing disadvantaged females facing exceptional challenges in all parts of the world. And I thank the United Nations Women's Executive Director and the whole of the UN Women's Team for making this event possible. Within the UN uh, family, we are all aware that UN Women has established itself as a strong voice for women's empowerment, advancement, education, and push all parts of the system to mainstream women's needs in every field. This is further recognized, in my opinion, by UN Women's insight in the adoption of this prestigious global award, marking another significant contribution 
to the advancement of women. If you allow me, ladies and gentlemen, I also like to extend a special thanks and congratulations to Her Excellency Halal Ansari, Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women in Bahrain, on this landmark achievement that is the climax of years of hard work to drive Bahrain's deeply ingrained women empowerment culture beyond our national borders. Ladies and gentlemen, despite the challenging situation in the world is currently, the world is currently facing with the COVID-19 pandemic, it is necessary to remain committed to easing its social and economic effects and impacts and aim to resolve the issues facing female worldwide. It is pivotal to emphasize that reaching gender balance and empowering females is not solely the business of women, but rather it is collective effort for us all. Hence, this esteemed global award strives to hear and further echo the voices of women where, uh, everywhere in the world. Young women, elderly women, disadvantaged women, disabled women, women workers, and women professionals across all sectors. This is accomplished by engaging women as beneficiaries and contributors towards achieving the fifth sustainable development goals on gender balance and women empowerment as my previous distinguished speakers mentioned. In addition, ladies and gentlemen, it is practically particularly fitting here to briefly discuss the kingdoms of Bahrain, the Kingdom of Bahrain's relentless efforts to coaching the principles of women's empowerment, mainly economically, recognizing that, the, that investing in women is financially a very smart move. The kingdom is leading by example, as Her Excellency uh, Halal Ansari mentioned. And this, this morning, uh, by coincidence, Bahrain released its labor force statistics that showed employment in the private sector is 60% of the total workforce, of which percentage of Bahraini women in the private sector is represented by 35%, with 40% of those in working in the financial and banking sector. Employment in the public sec uh, sector, however, represented only 34%. And so you can see that the private sector are the driving force behind economic sustainability and providing job opportunities for women. It is also significant that the private sector is a crucial ally in advancing women's economic empowerment. Companies, by embracing and supporting women at work, as a worker, as consumers, as producers, as suppliers, act as a catalyst for change and supportive partner in progress, in the progress of women's empowerment. Investing in women also brings several benefits, such as risk reduction, supply chain uh, stability, better financial performance and agility, creativity, and brings innovation and enables it into the workplace. My company, for example, in the Kingdom of Bahrain, recognize that our involvement and contribution through our gender equality policies and procedures is considered key towards the success and sustainability of women's empowerment. Finally, I would like to pose a question and many 
in the world are posing this question too. Does women's empowerment make good business sense? I can confidently say yes and a big yes. It makes great sense. If you adhere to the criteria set for this prestigious global award, your organization and company will be a more profitable, more sustainable, more efficient, more dynamic, and a more innovative organization. My organization is a testament to this as twice winning of the Royal Highness Princess Sibika's similar prestigious local award in Bahrain, an award that was established since 2006. Therefore, I encourage all institutions worldwide and in particular the private sector to participate in this prestigious award to enable you to enjoy the fruits that we at GPIC continue to enjoy. In conclusion, I wish all the participants in this edition of the best, in this edition, the best of success. And I look forward to the global award reaching greater heights in its effort to bring women empowerment and gender balance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdurrahman. Thank you in particular for highlighting the fact that women's economic empowerment, participation and leadership in the private sector is absolutely essential to economic growth and sustainability. And thank you, if I may, for saying that you, you've highlighted some of the more innovative, newer areas where we can fully explore opportunities for women's empowerment in the private sector, such as the opportunities provided by gender responsive procurement and supply chains. Um, and this could have a, a, an exponentially multiplier effect in terms of ensuring women's participation and leadership in the private sector. Um, thank you very much for your remarks. Um, but for now, if you'll please bear with us, I would like to introduce uh, our, our speaker in this morning's panel, Ms. Cindy Serenia Bishop. And Ms. Bishop is a television presenter and public advocate for the elimination of violence against women. And she's the founder of social movement, hashtag don't tell me how to dress. In 2018, Ms. Bishop was awarded activist of the year by the prime minister of Thailand. And since 2020, she has served as goodwill ambassador for UN women focusing on the Asia Pacific region. Ms. Bishop, could you kindly share with us your reflections on champions for women's empowerment, inspiring change in their communities? Ms. Bishop, the floor is yours. Thank you, Josephine. Um, and hello, everyone. Thank you for having me here today. It is truly an honor to be able to speak at this event. Um, and of course, organized by UN Women and the government of Bahrain, is a great addition to the Generation Equality Forum happening at the moment in Paris. It's through global events such as these that we are able to raise more awareness on the urgency on pushing the agenda for gender equality and to galvanize action on behalf of all sectors, government, public, private. And gender equality can only be achieved through cooperation and through collaboration from all of us. And it is imperative that we continue to raise our collective voices and demand action in order to bring about real and lasting change. So I would like to take this opportunity to talk about the importance of giving a platform to champions for women empowerment on an individual level, doing inspiring work in their own communities. It can sometimes feel overwhelming for an individual um, to do anything and perhaps feel like, well, how can I even make a difference? But we all can and we should do something, anything, because we all have the power within this to create change in whatever way that we feel empowered to do, in whatever space we occupy or whatever platform that we use, because it's in our words, our daily actions, in what we teach our children and how we treat others that change can come about. 
on my advocacy journey, I've had the honor of meeting so many other along the way who are just as passionate about giving women and girls equal rights and opportunity. They are doing amazing work, and many of them humbly and silently, although powerful forces nonetheless. I'm inspired by individuals working at their grassroots levels and in their communities, like Sia Kukalkasem in northern Thailand. She's the founder of the Freedom Restoration Project, who works with migrant women and girls. Many of them are victims of abuse and trafficking. In this age of social media, individuals have the power to reach such a wider audience and many influencers are now using their platforms to empower, inspire and educate. Especially in my industry of beauty and entertainment, there is a revolution towards more diversity, inclusivity and a rejection of beauty ideals that previously lent, uh, left so many women out. Now there are so many empowered women celebrating individual individuality and uniqueness like Dene Mercer, he's a body positive advocate based in Dubai, and celebrity Jamila Jamil, founder of the I Way movement. So for young girls who are just starting to use social media, this kind of representation is so crucial to the forming of self-esteem, self-acceptance, and self-confidence. And this is not only for women in front of the camera, but those working behind, like women directors, producers, and journalists. For example, Sunita Shweta, a journalist and filmmaker from Nepal, whose documentary, Nepal Slave Girls, brought awareness to the plight of girls in forced labor in her country. And I recently had the honor of being one of the jurors of the Generation Equality Film Festival, showcasing stories of women and girls around the globe. Yet another example of how storytelling and representation can be powerful vehicles for change. For teachers and educators, you have the power to make a difference in the lives of your students. And this comes with an immense responsibility to not only teach math and science, but also about the world. Liz Kleinrock, a teacher in Washington, D.C., goes above and beyond in terms of teaching her students all things gender and racial equality. And through my advocacy, I realized that the root cause of so much gender equality is based on gender norms and stereotypes that are passed down through generations and generations, especially here in Asia. The idea that somehow a boy is more valuable than a girl is a very problematic narrative and we need to change that by calling out harmful gender norms and stereotypes. For those of us who are parents, we literally have the power to shape the future of our next generation. We need to empower our girls to be the best versions of, of themselves and also to support them to be able to explore their potential and we need to be teaching our boys the meaning of consent, how to respect women, healthy ways to express their feelings, and the meaning of a happy relationship. And so you can see there are many ways that we can all be champions for women empowerment and so many examples of individuals already leading the way. And I'm so excited to get to know all the candidates for this year's Global Award for Women Empowerment, and I wish them all the best. Thank you. I now turn to my colleague, Nohana Nagdi, who will introduce the website for the Bahrain Global Award and explain how interested parties from each of the four eligible categories can apply using the online application form. Mr. Nagdi, the floor is yours. So I'm going to give a quick demo on what kind of information you can find on the website and how to apply or nominate an organization or an individual. As you may see on my screen, the website for the Global Award is womenglobalaward.org. Once you are on the website, you can find information on the Global Award itself, like the objectives and the history of the award, and it's available in Arabic and English. You may also find information on Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa in three languages, Arabic, English, and French. If you want to more, to know information about the jury members, you can go to the jury members uh, tab and you will find information on the, on the names and the title of each jury member, as you can see. Then, if you go to the winners tab, you will get to see the first round winners and to listen to them talking about their amazing initiatives and how they, are, and how they were able to make a difference within their communities. 
Now, I will show you how you can apply or nominate an organization or an individual. Please note that you can only apply through the official website. All you need to do is to go to the Apply Now section and select the relevant category, whether it's public sector, private sector, civil society organization, or individual champions. Let's go to the civil society category. As you may see, the first thing that you need to do is to select your preferred language. This year, we're providing the application form in four languages, Arabic and English, Spanish and French. Let's select English. So as you can see, the form contains a set of questions on, or, on the organization. You can nominate the organization that you work for or another organization whose work you admire and provide the relevant details. At the end of the, of the application, you will need to upload some supporting documents. And then once you're done, you just need to click Submit. Also on the website, you can find a list of, of frequently asked questions, like who can apply, how can I apply, and how many awards are there, and more other information. Please have a look at these to help guide your application. If you are interested to know more about the work of the Bahrain Supreme Council for Women, please click on SCW in the menu bar, and it will take you to the official website of the Supreme Council for Women. Also, if you need to know more about the work of UN Women in the Arab States region, please click on UN Women, and it will take you to our website, and it's available in English and Arabic. Now, I would like to invite you to follow you and women and the Supreme Council in Bahrain on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And share your messages using the hashtags Global Work for Women and SCW20. Thank you so much for listening, and we are looking forward to receiving your application. Over to you, Josephine. We'll now hear a message of support from Her Excellency Fumzile Mlambo Mkuka the UN Undersecretary General and Executive Director of UN Women. Today uh, we really are thankful to the Kingdom of Bahrain for having come up with the, an award that recognizes global champions uh, on gender equality. But the nice thing is that uh, young people can apply, institutions can apply, civil society, governments, and, 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 and women uh, leaders. What uh, we are looking for here, it's people who are doing uh, initiatives that will make a difference, that other people can learn from, that can become role models. Uh, well, uh, I think Her Royal Highness has been working on it uh, for a long time, but uh, in the last two years we started discussing in earnest uh, with UN Women, and now we are launching, people must, be, must start applying now because it's open for application, because next year, this time, we will have winners. It's now my pleasure to invite Ms. Suzanne Michael, UN Women Regional Director for the Arab States, to make closing remarks. Ms. Michael, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Josephine. And exactly as our executive director stated, we will have winners and we already do have winners. Your, your, your Royal Highness, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim El Khalifa, Chair of the Supreme Council for Women, the Kingdom of Bahrain, Excellency, Minister Hala Al Ansari, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Women, Kingdom of Bahrain, and Excellency, Mr. Emmanuel Mayer, Chargé d'Affaires of the Embassy of France to the Kingdom of Bahrain. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm closing today with feelings, feelings of inspiration and of pride. Pride because of this partnership between you and women and the Supreme Council of the Kingdom of Bahrain on the launch of the Global Award uh, 2021. Now, building on the first iteration of the award in 2019, we now, the second cycle, showcase even more examples of the hard work on the ground. Our distinguished speakers and panelists spoke clearly about the tangible contributions that stakeholders from governments, private sector, civil society, and individuals make to advance women's empowerment. Contributions, yes, but most of you spoke equally of the benefits 
of gender equality. We heard of the financial benefits. We heard of the development benefits. We heard of the societal benefits. Because the time, my friends, to act is, of course, now. Because now more than ever, we strive to build back better, a more equitable and a more fair world as we all collectively recover from COVID-19. I hope that you found today's discussions as inspirational as I did. And I hope that you will apply and I hope you will share widely with your networks. I, for myself, I'm honored to be part of the award jury panel. And we will look particularly at a certain characteristics, at applications that identify very specific challenges and clear strategies to address those. We will look at evidence of inclusive approaches. We will look and take into consideration the uh, applicants, applications that are looking particularly at groups that are most left behind, both in national and global development. We will look at innovative solutions, and we will also look at solutions that have results at scale and are sustainable. Excellencies, colleagues, and dear friends, as highlighted earlier in the message of our Assistant Secretary General, Anita Batia, today's launch is also taking place at the sidelines of Generation Equality Forum, which is main objective, or one of its main objectives, is bringing together diverse stakeholders, different generations, to achieve the Agenda 2030 with its 17 sustainable goals, out of which one, of course, SDG 5 is on gender equality. These moments, my dear friends, we come together, we openly listen to each other, and we consider new ideas to break out of the business as usual model. These are the moments that we define new paths to push the frontiers for gender equality. I thank you for making this possible. And on behalf of you and women, I express my deep appreciation to Her Royal Highness, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa and the Supreme Council for Women for their contribution to this global dialogue. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Mikhail. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our launch event today. Thank you very much for your interest and your commitment to the Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women's Empowerment. With your continued support, we will celebrate and elevate achievements for women's empowerment around the globe. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>